Welcome to the Hot Chicks Write Hot Books podcast with Jen Foster and Melanie Johnson, where authors give you their inside secret tips on how to be a successful best-selling author. Hi, welcome to Hot Chicks Write Hot Books podcast here with Jen Foster and Melanie Johnson. Today we have David Traub with us who is a two-time best-selling author and he also has written a co-authored a third book. His uh, main book is Sales and Selling and um, he has a, he's a sales strategist. He knows all the great things on how to convert uh, people to get them to be clients, not just prospects. And um, let's see, I'm going to read a couple things here. He has been, uh, not only does he is an author, but he's on the front lines. He's selling every day. So he's in the trenches. He's not just writing about it and pontificating about it. He's actually doing it every day as well. And um, he um, works on his business. with He works with owners, and he does consulting as well with them. And he gives you the five steps. He's got a simple five-step process that he's going to tell us about. And then he's going to give us all his inside tips on how he wrote his book, how to be an author, and how to market your book. Welcome, David. We're so glad to have you here today. Um, give us a little background on yourself. I'm, I'm glad to be here as well. So, you know, I guess the the background that ultimately means the the most is about how and why I really think about myself as being sales first. I mean, I've done it pretty much my entire life. But almost 12 weeks into the pregnancy of what ultimately was going to end up becoming my son and bringing him into my life, uh, we were told that there was a complication with the pregnancy. And the complication was of such that it was about an 80% chance that he was never going to be born. Um, and it was about 12 weeks in that we found this out. Over the next couple weeks, we had consultation after consultation and appointment with specialists. And I think for a week straight, we had ultrasounds every day. I uh, ended up starting to call them uh, photo shoots that Alexander was having. <laughs> and after a couple weeks of that, we flew out to Philadelphia. And we went to a children's hospital there, and we had uh, an experimental prenatal surgery. We flew home, and then after that, every week for the rest of the pregnancy, there was another appointment, and there was another photo shoot. And it was a really stressful period of time. Mm -hmm. But during all of that, um, I was able to spend the time to be with my family. And I was able to be at every appointment every week. And the only reason was because I had that skill of being able to sell. And so even though I had a job uh, and I was you know, traditionally employed at the time, the skill that I had allowed me to know that even by taking some of my focus away, I was able to spend the time that I needed without having the extra stress on top of it yeah. of, um, of being able to be with my family. And it's because of that, that one skill was the only reason that I was really able to be there for my family the way that I was. And so even to this day, while I have my own business, I first and foremost think of myself as being a salesman. That's what it is that I really do. And ultimately what that really means is that I, just, I talk to people for a living. And, and that's yeah. all there is to it. Um, and I work mostly with coaches, consultants, independent business professionals who are selling their own services, mm -hmm. but whose businesses may be struggling because they're not converting enough prospects right. into clients. And then I show them a really easy to follow process to, to brilliantly enroll all the prospects that they want into whatever it is that you know that they're doing, whether it's coaching program, consultant program, mm -hmm. training program, show them to how to enroll as many clients as they want. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. I love that story. So Thank you. Even if you uh, had to take some time off, you knew you'd be taken care of just because of you You know the sales strategies, you know you can sell, you know the money's coming in. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Well, and, the, we, and, and that holds true for, for most business owners. If they're in a position that they are really able to sell their services, mm -hmm. they're going to have the freedom that they, that they want. And if they aren't able to convert as many prospects into customers as they need, they're never going to have that level of freedom that really comes from owning your own business. Right, that's true. Well, tell us a little bit where you came from. How did you get into sales? How did you get into what you do now? How did you become this expert? It's it, it's interesting because when I started college, I knew one thing about my future career, and that was I did not want to go into sales. So about the only thing I knew is that I didn't want to do that, and it's <laughs> turned out to be the only thing I've ever done. 
and uh, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And I sort of fell into it. Is during college, I got a part-time job working for IBM, selling computer systems on campus to faculty and staff. And mm -hmm. I took the job because I thought it was going to be good business experience, getting IBM on my resume before I, you know, before I even really went out into the workplace. And I thought I was interested in technology and was going to go down a, a technology path. And so particularly having IBM on my resume at that time meant a, meant a whole lot. And I just really ended up falling in love with the sales part of the job. And that it, it stuck. I've, you know, I've done a couple times where I've gone off and done sales management, and I don't enjoy it as much as actual selling because when I'm, when I'm actually selling, I'm getting to interface and have these, you know, one-on-one -on -one discussions with the actual clients. And when I move into management, it's cool to coach other people, but I lose out then on, on having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's really a gift to know what you're good at and what your passion is, that you figured it out at a young age that you really liked sales and that's what you wanted to do. Um, so how did you transcend your passion of sales and decide to turn that into a book to share it with other people? So for quite a while, I had had this inkling in me that there was a lot that I knew and could teach in a book about selling. And I wasn't really sure how to go about doing it, whether it would be received, how to market it, any of all, any of that stuff. So it just kind of was, was was there, and yeah, maybe someday, sort of thing. And uh, then a friend of mine and a mentor and a client uh, went on to teach a class for how to take your expertise and turn it into a book. And so I went and I attended that class, and 24 days later, I launched my first book. Uh, so I just I, I went and and took the process that was being taught and implemented what I was told, and lo and behold, it turned into a book, and uh, ended up uh, spending about a month on the top ten list in all of sales and selling on Amazon. Wow, that's awesome! Congratulations. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, what's the name of it? Uh, the oh, the name is uh, of the first one is uh, called Team of One. Um, and it's about how to get the sales results of a full-time sales team, even if you don't already have one. Hmm. Awesome. So how did you go about, I mean, you said you went to a class, but how did you go about starting or writing the book? What did you actually do to get your content and get your book written? So, so on the plane on the way home, the class was out in San Diego. I live in Chicago. On the plane on the way home, I wrote out for myself a, a combination of, the most common questions that people ask me about selling, mm -hmm. and uh, and also the questions that they should be asking but often don't, yeah. and so I wrote those down, and then I also wrote kind of took a, an outline around some other components that I wanted to weave into it, and so I just really kind of built a very general outline for myself, and then after I got home, pretty much starting the next day. I carved out some time every day, and I just recorded myself answering those questions, mm -hmm. and ended up getting those transcribed, and then could work with it from a words perspective. But having it recorded got me out of my head so much at trying to get craft the perfect word each time it went onto the page or in, into the computer, and I was just able to get the content out and then worry about crafting the linguistics later. Yeah, I think a lot of our listeners are always, you know, wondering, well, I don't know, you know, I don't think I know enough to write a book or, you know, I don't know what would go inside my book. And what you just described is exactly what we all need to do is just write down our questions that people ask us or the top 10 questions and then answer them, record them. Because all your expertise is in here and when you can express that, that's your book. And you don't have to sit down physically and write it. And I think that's so awesome that we have the knowledge to create books that way. Uh, absolutely. That process works really well. And you, you take all the details that when you talk to someone about what you do, you just take that and convert it into words. And it's it, 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 then you can stitch that together later into the right order. Mm -hmm. But if you just take the snippets of stuff that people are always asking about it, that you're always telling people, and just record those, each individually, it later comes together pretty pretty seamlessly into a book. Yes. 
How would you um, tell someone to get started? You gave some great tips that you know you recorded your voice. What if I'm not even sure what I'm an expert at? Um, I may have a day job. I might not be passionate about it, but I have a lot of interest. How do you hone that down and then get started from there? What would be your advice? So if if you don't think that you're passionate about what your day job is and that's really not what it is, then just kind of look at what is it that you're really interested about and when you're not at work, what are you talking about the most with your friends and family or colleagues? And that you, there may be two or three different topics that come up. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's knitting or maybe it's marketing or maybe it's cooking. Um, it, but whatever those topics are, those would be the things that if you talk about it the most, you probably have expertise you don't even realize you do. You don't need to be the best in the world at it in order to write the book. You just need to be better than most of the people that would read the book. Right. And, and even then, it's not always that you even have to be better or new to it. So in, in the world of, uh, of selling, I read a ton on the topic. And mm -hmm. Most of the books at this point in my career that I read, there's very little new education that it contributes to me, and okay. yet every time I read somebody else's book, even if I already knew it, I still learn something because right. there's a new twist. There's a new, it makes me think yeah. about something in a different way, or yeah. it makes me go back to doing something that I didn't, that I knew to do, but mm -hmm. haven't been doing. And so even a book that is on the same level of someone that reads it still provides immense value to them. Yes. I like how you say that should be re continue growing, continue researching. Um, don't think that you know it all and um, even, after, even after you've written a book and get new ideas. And you're right, when you're reading something, um, it does all, it's, the spark plugs go off. Even like you said, you went to a seminar and that inspired you. It's uh, reading, listening, doing something that it, it's getting your mind inspired and making you think about things that you, maybe you didn't before. Yeah. Yeah. So David, tell us, um, while you wrote your book, what were the do's and don'ts? So what are some of the things, the mistakes that you made, or you know, what are some of the do's and don'ts in writing in the, in the book process? Well, I, I gave myself a very short deadline to wanting to have it done. And mm -hmm. um, I was, essentially I had full-time responsibilities at the same time. So this was something I was doing on the side. And that short of a deadline can be a little bit of a stressor. Uh, so I think it's important to make sure that you have something else that's going to decompress you while you're doing it or give yourself a little bit longer period of time, but not too long. So um, I I've seen a lot of people who have been working on books for months and months and months and sometimes years, uh, and they say they're working on the book. But what that means is that once a month for a half hour, they write. Yeah. Uh, and so I'd say pick pick a schedule and do something ideally do something for it every day mm -hmm. and you know it could be as simple as record one tip or one strategy or one thing every day mm -hmm. and it could be five minutes but right. you want every day to do something that's making progress towards your end goal you know one tip might be um, my son is having to write an essay for school and of course, at school, you have a deadline. The homework is due. So it's, that's what you're saying. You have to have that deadline either way. Make it a realistic deadline for you. Um, and then I just spoke to the English teacher today, and they gave it an extension of another day for them. So you can give yourself the leeway of an extension, but give yourself that realistic deadline like homework. It's got to be due at the end of the day. Sure. Uh, abs yeah, a absolutely. The deadline helps, which is why I was able to get my book done in 24 days. I gave myself a, a, a deadline. Probably didn't need to be, uh, you know, next time around, uh, uh, I'll give myself a deadline, but not as not as tight. On, on my second book, I think uh, that book came together over about 60 days, mm -hmm. and that was that was a pretty reasonable pace. Mm -hmm. That's nice to know that's a reasonable deadline, 60 days, to give someone, if you want to be on the fast track, do the 30-day thing. Um, so since you've had your book written, what fantastic things have happened to you since then um, because of your book? Well, uh, one of them is I, I have a whole lot more opportunities to have conversations with folks like you. So I've been invited to be on podcasts and webcasts a number of times without having to seek out the the opportunities or publicity for it. So in the past, any speaking engagement that I did, 
I always had to go out and find it and pitch it and, and sell it. And mm. now I've had some opportunities that have come around just because of, uh, of it. Um, I also am going to be doing a telesummit in June, I think is the, the time frame. And I'm st still cool. pulling all the pieces together. But the caliber of people that I'm getting to work with on it and getting to interview uh, for that summit is very different than it would have been if I wasn't able to introduce myself to these other experts as someone that was a best-selling author on my topic. So it's, it's changed the dynamics very much on that. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's really good news. It's, it's so nice when they just come to you, right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you done with your book? Um, you know, you get in new speaking gigs and stuff, that's what's happened, but what are you, have you actually done with your book? Do you have any book signing parties, or did you do you only sell it online, or what kind of other things do you do with your book? I, I did mine only uh, only online, so I didn't do any of the, the book signings or, or, or any of that sort of stuff. Um, maybe next time around uh, I will, but for, for me it was mostly about, um, uh, about getting the content out, and mm -hmm. the actual online launch from a positioning of being able to say that I wrote the book. And I really didn't care about having all the people around and signing the books and that sort of sort of thing. It, it wasn't going to drive my, my, what my bottom line objectives were. Mm -hmm. um, so I just didn't do it. But uh, you know, a lot of people find that it fits into their, uh, their business really well. And a lot of people, the exposure from the book signing can be really good for them as well. But now you do have the book. So when you do do those speaking gigs, or when you, if you do any live speaking, you have the books that you can sell. Exactly. Yeah, I, uh, I'm able to both sell the books at the uh, at the event. There's still sales taking place every day online. Uh, it's not a, a phenomenal amount of money that's that's coming in from the books, but uh, a couple neat toys that I've been able to buy for myself without having to pull it out of my budget. So that's uh, that's been pretty nice, and it, the positioning of being able to say that you're a number one best-selling author, that you were a best-selling author, even just that you're an author, changes the game in your conversations with people about what you do. Uh, they listen to you differently because you're suddenly deemed an expert just by having the book. Um, and you're able to get conversations with people that you may not have otherwise been able to get the conversations with in the first place. So uh, it's nice to hear, sorry, that uh, doors are opening for you. What would you say um, are the marketing, give us three marketing tips for someone who's going to, they're ready to launch their book, how would you say they can really promote their sales? So uh, it's, a, it's a great question, and I, I've had a lot of conversations with folks as they're doing planning around their book launches, and over and over I'll hear from people, well, I'm not really sure how to launch it because I don't have a list. I've only got 10 people on my list, or a really small list. And the reality is that they're fooling themselves when they say that they don't have a list. They may not have a list in an automated uh, tool, you know, a, an autoresponder sequence or something like that, but they've got a list. It's just spread out. So when you're getting ready to do your book launch, go back through the contacts in your phone. Go back through all of the work emails that you've sent over the last couple of years and start gathering a list of people who you had a good enough relationship with that you can just send an email out and say, hey, I wanted to let you know my book is launching. It's going to be coming out on Thursday. I thought you might be interested because it's about and then you tell them you know, a little bit about what it's about. Uh, I'm doing a special promotion at launch. If it, you know, if you're able to purchase it on launch day, it would mean the world to me. Here's why it would help. And you can send out that email. And, and people will pull two, three, four, five hundred names of people they could reach out to on a one-off email like that pretty easily, even though they think they have no list whatsoever. Right. I like that. That's a great tip. Yeah, great tip. That's really good. Well, I, I want to mention real quick... Um, David, because one of the ways that I love marketing is the Amazon author page. And when I saw your Amazon author page, you just look so credible, and I love all your books that you show on there. And uh, the other the other thing I want to mention is David is a part of the book that I'm a part of that's called Stand Apart with Dan Kennedy. And he has a chapter in there as well as the one that I have. And um, online on Amazon, I love looking at that the stand apart page of that book because it shows some of the authors and the, not all the authors have taken advantage of putting their picture or claiming that book and 
it just, you know, I'm on that and I see David and I can click right on him and his author page looks so great and you can see all the other books he's written and, and buy those books and it's just a great way to keep you, you know, in front of people and, and just the marketing aspect of collaboration. I love that. Absolutely. That's a great point. A lot of people ignore the, the author page, and particularly if they participate in a book where they collaborated with others. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't get themselves added to the author list for that book, and it's a, a definite uh, a definite thing that they want to do in order to make sure to maximize the promotion from that collaboration. Right. And then I wanted to ask you, um, how do you go about getting reviews? What would be some good tips for um, authors? They've launched their book now, they're getting some sales, but they need to get some reviews. What would you suggest for them? So um, the number one thing is just to, to ask for them uh, in, in two ways, one it, or two, two places rather. One is when you are sending out your email telling people about the book or you're posting on social media, just let them know. It would also be really great if you could leave a review for me. Uh, the other thing that you can do is that I uh, I always encourage people, and I know that you guys do as, as well, it's part of your process, is that people that buy the book, there should be a way of them getting some extra additional information or bonuses for you by either sending a copy of the receipt or registering the book with you. And so all the people that take that step to do it, then ask them again, hey, I'm so glad glad that you've registered the book. Obviously you're enjoying it since you wanted additional information. I'd love to get some feedback from you. If you could take a moment to either reply to me, let me know what you got out of the book, or go to my Amazon page, use this link, and just leave a public review for others so that they know why the book would be a benefit. And and people will take you will, will take you up on that. You know, some may not leave the public review, but you'll get some great snippets yourself that you may be able to uh, to use, whether it's publicly or, or anonymously, a feedback from people that will write to you about it as well. Awesome. I'm going to re-watch this and type that out word for word for my email. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may want to wordsmith it a little bit. You may not want to go word for word, but <laughs> yeah. the idea is set out. Yeah, that's that's great. So social media and, and um, people who have already bought your book. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So the, one of the last questions we want to ask you is, do you have any funny stories or any kind of, um, experiences that happen because of your book or, or in the process of writing the book? Is there anything uh, in particular you can think of? So you, uh, I got a, a little bit of a bad connection there. You're, you're oh. fuzzing out, so I didn't actually hear what you okay. said. We want you to tell her a, uh, a funny story. If you can have any funny stories since you've written your book, um, becoming a best-selling author, um, give us some um, levity. So it's uh, it, it's interesting, you know. People that um, are in my life were all excited by it. My wife was thrilled. She's all excited about it. She was really proud. Her face lights up whenever she sees one of the books laying around the house. Uh, my you know my parents and family all were you know were excited. Uh, I told uh, my 15 year old son about it, and he's like, Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> so it meant absolutely nothing to him. Um, so it, it's. Uh, yeah, and, and he's probably the one that I wanted the most to think, okay, this is really cool, but it's just so outside his his world of the stuff that you know that him and his friends talk about. The idea that dad's an author means absolutely nothing. It's not that he cares about me any less. It's just that he does. He didn't need that to feel any differently about. Uh, about not like a stuff. game master on Minecraft or something like that, and have the best uh, or something that would impress him. Yep. It, it, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. When when I when I'm when I ran when I ran the wired cable um, so that he could come off of Wi-Fi and connect directly to our internet connection into his room, that was fantastic. But you know the <laughs> fact that the the fact that I could write a book and that it was a bestseller, yeah, fifteen year olds doesn't impress them. <laughs> yeah. So true. Well, what can you tell our listeners that will uh, encourage them? Why why should they become an author? There is probably nothing that that you can do that elevates your positioning in whatever it is that you're an expert at or want to be an expert at. There's nothing that you can do that'll elevate your positioning beyond being able to say that you're a, an author of it. That you know, there may be you may get some tears there in our I'm an author, I'm a best selling author, I'm a number one best selling author. But the reality is the doors that it will open for you and the way that people will respond to your expertise changes even though you haven't gotten any better 
the moment you're able to say that you're an author on the topic. Mm -hmm. That's so true. That's so true. Well, we're so excited to have you on our show today, and uh, we're excited about your books. I'm excited. I know that I've bought a couple of them. I've only read parts, so I need to finish them because all the tips and things that you were talking before about sales and having a sales team, I'm like, yeah, I need to read more of the books and figure out more of myself. So that's great. I'm excited to, to do that. Um, Melanie and I want to talk a little bit about um, why we're doing this podcast and to promote our event a little bit. Um, I mean, the main reason for doing this podcast is to help others know and understand that they can become best-selling authors and that um, there's simple steps to creating a book and simple steps to getting, getting your book on, um, online and selling your book and that everyone can do it. And so I'm going to have Melanie talk a little bit about um, our event that we're doing where we're having um, women come and we're teaching them to write books. So go ahead, Melanie, and talk about that. You know, David, I love that um, you gave us that timeline of you had the 30 days, which was really intense to get a book written, and then 60 days seemed more plausible to get it all written, the cover designed, and get ready to do your launch. Um, well, with our event, Hot Chicks Write Hot Books, we're going to be at the beach this year. Um, you're going to have your book written in seven days. Seven days if you are want to be inspired, so you'll be inspired when you get there. Um, and we're going to give you a system that you'll have your book written in seven days. Not 30 days, not 60 days, but in seven days. You'll have your cover designed. Um, you'll have your author page done, which David talked about. It is so important to have that done as well. You'll be uh, pretty much ready to go, and we'll have a marketing plan for you using some of the tips that David uh, has given us and our other authors that have been on and have suggested. We have that in our arsenal of tools to launch your book to help it be number one and be a be number one best-selling author. So think about how your life would be different uh, after you have that book versus now. Like uh, David said, think about you'll be an expert, how that will change people's perception of you in the marketplace, how that may increase your sales, increase your business. Your 15-year-old might not be impressed, but everybody else will be impressed. <laughs> so we invite all of you to come down to the Dominican Republic with us. We have this incredible, beautiful seven-bedroom villa down there. And if we need more, we'll get another one as well. There's one right next door. And um, everything's included except for your airfare. We have a chef coming every morning to cook this fabulous big array of breakfast for us right out by the pool. We'll be writing our book at the beach. We've just posted our agenda so you can see exactly what we'll be doing every day. And we have a lot of fun things included in there as well that I think you'll like just to blow off some steam. And we're going to be riding some ATVs. We're going to be jumping off of waterfalls. we got all kinds of great things planned for you plus a fabulous goodie bag. So please um, join us. And if nothing else, please subscribe to our podcast. And we love having you listen to us and getting great tips and be uh, a best-selling author either way. So thanks for joining us, David. You've been fabulous. And uh, you cleaned up so well. You look so handsome today. <laughs> Thank you. It, it took a lot of work. <laughs> you got that nice shirt on and everything. I love it. Well, tell us a little bit about where that people can find you. What what website can they find you on besides your Amazon author page? Yeah, obviously Amazon author page is is one place, and then uh, my direct website is sellbrilliantly.com. So www.sellbrilliantly.com. All right. Well, we're going to post that on our site, and we want you to go there and visit David and definitely buy his book. I think um, if you might not think you're in sales, everything you do is sales. Even if you're trying to sell your kids on uh, trying to get them to uh, clean the room and make their bed. So um, I think all of his tips will be good for any aspect of life that you're in. Thanks for joining us again. We're signing off for Hot Chicks Write Hot Books. And uh, we'll see you at the next interview. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. For more information, you can visit our website at hotchickswritehotbooks.com or you can text your name and email address to 832-572-5285.